Hello, my friends from around the world. How are you all today? I am going to uh, open this link here so I can see who's out there. And uh, we can start having a chat. So here we are. All right, it's a rainy day in Brazil. And today we're going to talk about guitar. All right? Let me uh, pause this thing here. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Vamos começar com uma fochazinha aqui do, dos dominguinhos. and welcome. This is the first live of many lives that I'm going to be doing once a week where I'm just going to talk about guitar in general. Uh, in my life I've come across so many styles and I've been just a natural born uh, researcher I guess you could say always checking out all kinds of recordings and materials from all the best guitar players so I've dug deep into a lot of stuff from Brazilian world to flamenco to classical to the gypsy style. Uh, in fact, my uh, master's degree thesis was on that. I do have a master's degree that I, um, that I accomplished with a full scholarships from Georgia State University in Atlanta. That was between 2003 and 2005. Um, so yeah, well, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is mostly harmony and improvisation, which I think is, is what I can uh, uh, help you with the, the best ways, is what I can bring the most to the table, I believe. And uh, it's a lot to do with Brazilian music. Um, so we're going to pick a tune, okay? We're going to pick a tune. Yeah, and it's a rainy day in Brazil. Yes, it is. A uh, very rainy day in Brazil. So here we go. We're going, to, um, we're going to do a tune. And we're going to improvise the heck out of it, all right? So how about uh, if anybody can say any tune here, or I'll just come up with a tune. And then we're going to dissect it and, and analyze it and then build phrases on it. So how about maybe... Um, Meditation, maybe, be a nice tune from Jobin, that is, uh, let me just make sure I'm in good tune.
major tune, okay? Where you're gonna have uh, the first degree Ionian, and then you got this dominant right here on F sharp dominant. How would how would we treat that? From my experience, just the natural dominant scale going right here is great. That take, that takes care of the job. So here on Ionian, that's um, the major scale, right? Just normal. And then here, we can use the Mixolydian. So your job first, in order to be a good guitar player, is you have to know how to locate these intervals physically here on the guitar. That means this. If this is F sharp, I know I need a Mixolydian scale. So first, what is Mixolydian? It's tonic, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, and minor seven. So it's the only mode on the natural harmonized scale that has that tritone between the major third and the minor seventh. Um, it's the only uh, mode that has those two intervals, that, that combination of major third and minor seven. So that makes it unique. And basically you need now to locate these intervals here. So this is my major third, this is my fourth, this is my fifth. That's, that's fundamental. Every guitar player needs to think about the guitar this way, otherwise you're not going to ever see what's going on to control what's going on or manipulate it. In order to manipulate it, you have to place things, see see what, what everything is. So you got third here, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, minor seven, tonic, ninth, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, minor seven, and one again, and it sounds like one. This is also ear training because I'm thinking minor seven and I'm recognizing the, the sound of the interval, the combination of those two frequencies, right? So, uh, here's the uh, Mixolydian scale, We're holding the root. This is a great exercise for you to do, okay? Always do a scale holding the root, like this. Again. Okay, uh, going back to the tune. Da, meditation. Uh, One of two, we're aiming towards the two. Why? What, what is this? What is two? Two is if G is one, G is our tonic, our tone center is G. The second is A minor. So, your job also not only is to know how to locate the intervals on, on the neck of the guitar, but you need to know the harmonized scale right off the bat. If you don't know that, then you're behind. All right, so you need to know this Ionian, that means I have a family of seven chords Ionian, A minor, Dorian, B minor, Phrygian. C major 7 Lydian, that means it has a sharp 11. Uh, D Mixolydian, E Aeolian, all these, uh, okay, and 7 is Locrian, F sharp Locrian. All these names, these, these are the Greek modes, and all of them are simply scales that are built off of the natural scale, natural minor scale, but you, you, you're, for each one of these modes, you're seeing from the perspective of a different root. Each note gets to be the root. For its own mode. So then it changes the intervals. The sequence of the note is the same, but the intervals are changed, so you have a new scale. So here, you need to know that map because that's where every song is going to happen, okay? Um, so going on, um, we got this here. Is it 2 5 to 2? So I know that's A minor is my 2. What do I mean by 2 5? 2 5 is a basic progression that can get you to any chord. It's basically how to create harmonic movement. If I want to go from A to B, I do a 2 5 1, and that is like a motor, an engine that gets me going to B. So here I'm going from G major to A minor. What is the 2 5 1 of a minor chord? It is a half diminished chord as the 2, meaning one step above. So that B half diminished. And then the 5 is E7. And this 5 here, the 5 of a minor chord, can always use a variety of, of dominant options. The most common option is called the Phrygian dominant, which gives you a flat 9 and a flat 6. So again, you need to be able to see these intervals, these numbers very fast on the guitar. So I, if I say Phrygian dominant, I'm talking about 1, flat 2, major 3rd. So you got that minor 3rd leap between these two notes, a big interval, characteristic of the minor, uh, harmonic minor scale. Then you got a perfect 4th, a perfect 5th, flat 6, and minor 7. So here we go. Okay. That's the Phrygian dominant. So that's the sonority 
you have the phrygian dominant but that's only one option you can use the alter dominant the whole tone scale the diminished dominant scale you can use uh, a chromatic scale uh, there's a variety of things you can do when you create tension to resolve to resolve into another chord this is the target so that's where the song went so it, it, it went right here on the third so what's happening here second degree a minor dorian going to fourth degree appearing as a minor so here we have a little yellow flag here this chord does not belong to the key so it needs a special treatment what's happening here in this in the c the, the c major chord should have been a major chord uh the lydian mode right because on g lydian dorian frigid i'm sorry Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian. And C gets to be the Lydian in the, in the key of G. So the Lydian is basically uh, a major scale with a major seventh in a, in a perfect, in a uh, sharp 11. And that's the same scale as the G major, seen from the perspective of the C, okay? So you get this, this sound. It has that sharp four right there. of the Lydian. It's a nice sonority. You got that. Here we got questions. The Master Explorer Skin. It's trying to learn the intervals, at least it seems to me any way to learn it. Okay, Slim, uh, you, you asked the question here, I'm going to answer. Uh, the way to learn the intervals on the neck it goes like this. You, go, you refer to basic chords that everybody knows. For example, uh, bar chords, I mean, um, like A major. Okay, don't forget that I'm using a seventh string here, so ignore the, the string here. Just look at these six from the top, from the bottom up. So you got A major. So you use this, this uh, shape as a reference to learn the, the, the intervals. What are the intervals they have here? A fifth, so I know this is a fifth. That's how I, I know it. It's because I use this reference. And then this is the octave. And you listen to the octave and you recognize the sound of the octave. It's basically twice as much frequency. So if this is, say, 200, this would be 400. And then you got here the major third. So memorize on the guitar, Where, wherever you go, always going to be a major third and this is a fifth so wherever you go notice the sound of the fifth and finally you got the octave again so you use these basic chords and, and uh, um, figure out analyze the intervals that are there so that you can use these basic chords as a reference for everything else what I mean by that is this if you know this is the fifth then you know it's the next step the next um, uh, half step up you're gonna have the flat six another half step up you have the major six same thing going down you know that or maybe you need a table of intervals in case you don't know the intervals themselves and this is universal music it's not for guitar it's for piano trumpet whatever instrument the intervals are the same this is a universal musical uh, language um, it's basically two frequencies um, interacting that's what intervals are and basically these these are the names for intervals intervals are distances between notes okay so here we are uh, you need to know that uh, if you move half a step down from the perfect fifth then you got a sharp 11 or sharp four <laughs> if you move another half step down perfect fourth another half step down major third so all that I know just from having this starting point here of the fifth so you use the chords to figure out what are the, the, the intervals on those chords and then you have them as reference for the, the, the neighboring intervals. Does that make sense? Yeah, all right. All right, uh, what are we doing here? Any, any more questions, guys? Okay, so let's, let's keep talking about that song. Uh, so we got here. Da, 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 da. minor happening here the C minor can be treated in three different ways 
and this happens a lot in Brazilian music and even in jazz music, is the fourth degree appearing as minor. This happens also in classical music. Most of what happens harmonically in American music, and I mean even South America, is um, originated in the counterpoint uh, of the classical music era, mostly in the 18th century in the Bach related styles and, and mostly Bach. He was the guy that really set the rules for the harmonic movement uh, in Brazilian music as well and in classical music mostly, obviously. So here, um, now going on, we got this C minor and we're gonna treat it first as with the melodic minor scale. That's the perfect scale you use in this situation, I believe is the best sonority. Uh, what does it sound like? same finger is ideal for this voicing that I'm using of C minor melodic skill with the least effort. I'm a believer of uh, the guitar as a science of you finding the, the path of least effort. The guitar is one of the instruments that has the most amount of tricks and depth. It's like the more you study it, the more you realize how much depth there is to it. And the more, it's the smaller and more ignorant you feel. <laughs> Um, so this here is something that I came up with uh, many years after I had already earned the master's degree uh, and it's basically a way that you can voice a melodic minor chord. What that means is a minor chord with a major sixth and a major seventh interval. So it's not from the natural scale, it's another scale, another planet, if you will, that is the melodic minor. And then here on this voice you've got the major six in a cross bar effect. I got this note and this note by laying down, and I, when I found out I could do this, it's like my brain opened another compartment, it's like it calculated a bunch of new chords, okay, like the matrix, you know? I got a bunch of new chords in my mind that I could, oh, I can just use that finger, and then I got these fingers available. So, and this solves situations, like, if I, if, I, if I wanna play this note here, and immediately after that, I want to play a chord with the root, well, in this situation, I'll probably do this, but there's sometimes you just land in a certain position with a certain fingering and you need to find out um, what's the fastest way to play a chord without removing that finger from there. Because if you remove it, the note goes quiet and you don't want that. And sometimes your mind thinks the note's still ringing. That's a trap a lot of guitarists fall to is when you play the melody, you hold that melody and then you, you let go of the melody to play the chord and you can't do that. You gotta play the melody and the chord without taking, without killing the melody, right? So anyways, we're going into another uh, subject here. I wanna go back to the, to the original point. So we had the melodic skill going on here. So we got.
So yeah, guys. Um, so that's meditation and so so much stuff going on here. We analyze, we pretty much analyze the A part there uh, until C minor, and then we went to B minor in the key of G. That's just your Phrygian guy, right? It's like playing a G major chord. It's the same. Uh, it's it's a neighbor. It's a uh, uh, not a neighboring. It's the same function chord, it's a tonic function chord. This is important for you to know. In the seven chords of the harmonized scale, you got three functions going on. Tonic function chords, and those are one, three, and six. Your relative minor, which is a minor third behind one. And then you have your subdominant function chords, which are the ones that set up for tension. And these guys that set up for tension are your two and four. Uh, also, the seventh may be used for, uh, as a subdominant. One is a two, five, one to a minor chord. And finally, you have the dominant chord, which is unique. It's only one guy, and it's the fifth degree. So you gotta, you gotta see this map pretty, pretty quick. This is the kind of stuff that you use in music every day. If, you, if you're playing tunes, if you're learning tunes, this is gonna help you, help you learn tunes a lot faster. Memorize tunes. It's gonna help you just uh, with your ear training as well, because you, get, you, you start recognizing the sound of each mode and each degree within a key. So I can't stress how important that is. If you want to be a musician, if you want to evolve in music, even if you don't want to be a professional about it, get a sheet of paper, write by hand the seven names of the modes, get it from Google if you want, and then just set, it, set that on the instrument, you know, check out the scales, and just understand that. And your music life is going to go whoosh, you're going to compose a lot faster, you're going to just manipulate music a lot faster. To me, that's the ABC of music, is this, Ionian. Dorian. Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and back to Aeolian, back home. Five, one, improvising over A minor Dorian, so whatever goes on here. You got the minor major, you got the pentatonic scale. It's another subject you can talk about. Uh, let me take a uh, take a time to read some questions here. I've been just talking non-stop. Hey Felipe, then what about A major, F major, D major, then D which mode? Um, well, when you have a series of, uh, this question is from Usama Saristo. Um, when you have a series of major seven chords like that that belong to different keys, then you treat each one, uh, well, even if it's in the same key, you should always treat each chord, each chord separately. In the case here, you have two choices for each one of these major chords you mentioned. You mentioned A major, F major, and D major. You, you can use the Lydian scale, you can use the Ionian scale, which you would be considering one. You can use, um, say, the third mode of the melodic minor scale is the Lydian augmented, which has the sharp four and sharp five. So all those work over those chords you mentioned. Uh, in, in that case, each one is going to be a different key. You're not going to, they're not belonging to the same family. They are basically, basically changing keys or modulating is how they say it. Uh, I've thought about that, but never found any use to it. Cool to see someone else put it to use. Cool, Lucas Abdo, cool. Here we go. Um, Ah, I want to be plugged to the music matrix too. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> cool. Coffee, I should have known. Yeah, you guys, you guys just read me right through. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, isn't trying to hold the guitar like that without a guitar support on the leg. Isn't it, isn't it tiring? No, no, it's not tiring at all. I'm, I'm used to it. Here, Filippi, about right hand work and accompaniment. So basically, thumb is playing bass line and the rest of the fingers are kind of improvising with the chord structure. Uh, yes, uh, Laurie, Marha Kangas. Um, yes, the, 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 the thumb is doing the bass and the fingers are doing another thing. So you need to learn to make them independent. So any exercise that will do independ independency of these, of these parts is, is important. 
Um, but when you say improvising, yes, and at the same time, no. Because you are improvising, but within a language. Uh, if you're playing Brazilian music, you're improvising, uh, uh, trying to emulate the, the, the percussive, which, which is the nature of the Brazilian guitar, is always to emulate percussion and be very dancing. It's a, a lot more, a lot about the, uh, much about the rhythm than harmony and anything else. So um, you need to um, uh, improvise within the language that is characteristic to that style. So say if you're playing, a, 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 here is a bossa samba. So I'm trying to do very drawn long chords and, and respect sort of that uh, metric of the uh, clave of samba, which, which is from the tambourine, goes ta 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 That is one clave that I have written out on a, on a PDF that uh, is, is the main clave of samba and it can, uh, from that clave you can build four different styles of samba simply by twisting it around the four beats. You can uh, get the four beats and then you can do like this and then like that and then like that and then you get uh, a, different, um, a different sounding samba clave. I have that written on a course, I've put together this Brazilian, uh, Secrets of Brazilian Guitar course which has that information in detail. So here's what's going on in this, in this situation here. Listen to how I, I approach that. I approach that. The thumb, in this case, is a very simple thumb, just downbeats, quarter notes. One, two, three, four on the downbeat. Four, one. And I'm playing drawn out chords here, meaning I'm always pressing here rather than the the staccato, which. Another, another, another thing. You can be playful like that, yeah. But you notice that everything is in, within the language of samba. I'm always going like a tambourine. <laughs> you got that quicker going on. Um, the best way for you to be able to learn this is by listening to Brazilian music. There's no way around that. You gotta spend some time, just put it in your house every day when you're chilling with your coffee and whatever, making some food, put some Brazilian music out there and then this starts to come in by osmosis. And then if you have a good tool with your guitar and your, and your, and your body to be able to communicate without much obstacle, the ideas of your mind, that's where it's got to come from. It's from your contact with the, with, the, with the language and your absorption of that. And then you're ready to try to bring that about. Uh, any more questions here? Uh, hermano, hi, Lauren. All right, Felipe, you skipped my... Okay, I'm sorry. Bo, Bo, uh, 2116. Let's see here. Uh, maybe uh, I'm going back, Bo, to try to see your question. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, I found it. Hi, Felipe. Would you share some tips, exercises to develop ease of improvisation with single lines? Sure, man. I hope you're still online. Are you still online? Uh, I'm going to address your question right now. Bo, tell me if you're online. Um, a way to, uh, to, basically what you're saying is improvise, right? You see, uh, let me just make sure I read your question again and I can address it right away. Here we go. Um, Exercise develop ease of improvisation with single lines. All right. Basically, yes. This is a very, very deep and, and important subject. Improvisation, in my opinion, is like this. Um, you're always going to target the target tones, which are one, three, and five for every chord. That's your first business, your first obligation, responsibility. Every chord that there, there is going on presently in the music, you have to immediately locate these three notes on the neck, okay? For that, we use the caged system, which is a way that you separate um, uh, five different regions of the neck before it starts over, before the octave, right? So the, the caged system is something very simple. You can found, find it on the internet. I'll explain to you very quickly. It's basically the formation of uh, five shapes. You use these five basic shapes here, D, C, A, G, and E. So caged, the first shape is C. So let's do the C major chord in cage. Five C major chords. The shape C, the shape A, because it comes from here. The shape G is this one, goes here on C. The shape uh, E goes here on C. 
So you're every every shape you are placing a different region. And the last shape is shape D, which for C goes right here. Okay, also with this bass here. Okay, so you got that. So that uh, within there now you need to find ones, threes, and fives, and then you target those. Always target those notes. So uh, the the basic the best exercise is to start taking just one chord at a time. Just chill on C major. Okay, let me see if you answered if you're still online. Okay, yes, I'm all ears. Great, I'm glad. Stay with me. Uh, basically, you're going to now target these notes. Um, the way that I used to teach this is I I use um, uh, uh, how do you say um, speech. You think the same way as speech. Every time that you finish uh, landing on a target note, you have finished a word. So let's think about it as words. And if you start, uh, 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 if you play a note, a single note, and it's a target tone itself, let's consider that a word. It's like a one-syllable word, but it's a word on itself. It's it's self-sufficient. If you just play one note on the uh, from the chord, one target tone, one, three, or five. Just by itself, it's like a word, okay? So then all you do is the other notes, the neighboring notes, are going to work as neighbors that are working in function of resolving, of gravitating towards these target tones. Let's talk about this. C major 7. Here's my, here's my uh, ones, threes, and fives. That's one, three, five, okay? So now I just need to target that. So what's targeting? Um, uh, and from classical music, from the Bach era, there's one thing we learned very, very important. The strongest uh, resolution movement is caused by uh, an interval or a movement called leading tone. The leading tone is a half step movement from below and resolves, it creates the perfect tension for, that our brain recognizes for the resolution on the note that's just above, the target tone. So we're going to use that, we're going to apply this to C major, all leading tones, here we go. Understand what I did? Now, uh, now uh, the same thing, but from the upper side, the upper neighbor. It's a little different now because the upper neighbor is always going to be the next note on the scale. And for that point, when I say on the scale, there's a whole universe there because you're dealing with hundreds of scales. So you always need to know. That's the reason why you need to know your modes as well. Is because at this point, well, to find out who the upper neighbor is, um, which is something that needs to be uh, respected. Uh, you need to know what, what the scale is. So in the case here, if we are dealing with a C major Ionian, my upper neighbors are going to be from tonic, major second, from third, perfect fourth, so it's just half a step, from fifth, major sixth. Okay, so those are my upper neighbors. So then you create the first line, the first thing that it's called encapsulation or uh, approximation. We're going to, to have two surrounding contents which are going to encapsulate a central targeted content. This is what I'm talking about. Or, okay, and then we can mix it with the pages. Uh, or, yeah, you, then you can have a lot of fun. kind of uh, did more than that just there um, then I was using a little bit of the modal approach the modal approach is when you open that view uh, uh, is um, as opposed to the tonal approach you have tonal you have modal tonal is when you target one three and five modal is when you open and you consider all notes of the scale of this as, as the same weight or importance then you can have a chord that used to be just one three and five like a, a one six nine four sharp eleven whatever um, that's the modal approach. So in the modal approach, I may play a phrase like this. Uh, because here now I'm, I'm, I'm forcing the ninth, for example, the sixth right here, the ninth again, or I can put the fourth be there, the sharp four. That's the modal approach. I'm playing all this over C. So basically, uh, you, you can you can converge those two things, but but for now, let's stay with that. Let's stay with um, about improvisation. Um, let's stay with this uh, idea of the encapsulation here. So here's your first exercise. Uh, approximation of tonic is major second leading tone tonic. Then for the third, we go perfect fourth leading tone third. For the fifth, we go 
major six, leading tone to the fifth, and fifth. Leading tone is always the chromatic note, half a step below. And then you go for the tonic, major second, leading tone, tonic. And then for the third, so you notice that the third is the only one that has uh, a, a note half a step up as its upper neighbor. Uh, the upper neighbor is half a step up. The other ones, tonic and fifth, has the up, have the upper neighbor a whole step up. Is this making sense? Are you following me? I'm gonna start giving examples. Tell me if you're following me, please. Bo, you there, man? Let me know, let me know. All right. Uh, let's keep going there. Now, you can start using this as an exercise both for approximation and for harmonic and improvisation awareness, uh, but also, uh, okay, you're, you're here, uh, but also finger technique. So we, we can exploit this idea, instead of just doing this, we can do. This is one of my favorite exercises. It's very Brazilian-like. It goes like this. Uh, you can see there's a pattern to it. Basically, the pattern is like this. I'm starting with a note and I'm approaching from the leading tone. So I'm thinking third and I approach from the leading tone. Okay. Uh, sorry. If it's in C major, so the third is right here. So the uh, leading tone. And then I'm going to skip the, the what would be the next uh, chord tone, which is the fifth. I'm going to skip. To the tonic and I'm gonna approach that tonic from above so I got this effect I love it and now I'm going to apply the same thought uh, to the lower available next available chord tone which if I was on the third the lower next available chord tone is the tonic so I'm gonna approach the tonic by half step leading tone I'm going to skip the third which would have been the next note and I'm going to skip to the fifth and I'm, I'm going to approach this fifth from the upper neighbor, is the major six in case of a Ionian scale. So that's the sequence, and then so on you go on. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Yeah. I just love this phrase, I love this exercise because it has this melodic movement to it that you can use in any style pretty much. Uh, so, um, all right, I'm um, just checking, checking what you guys are writing here. Just one second, uh, making sure that uh, you're following me. All right, this is very interesting, following, following. Okay, Oscar, okay. All right, so here we go. Um, now let's look at some phrases, okay? Uh, another, another, um, another, well, let's look at some phrases uh, targeting the ones, threes, and fives, okay? First, just how about an arpeggio, always taking one step up, uh, two steps up and one back, two up and one back, so you got this. over a chord in order to you know make yourself free within it whenever it's time to really speak musically these these th basic things need to be um, you need to have covered them in at your practice time so again uh, notice for this time I'm using a, here um, a, a technique of thumb and finger and plucking it's very convenient for that very convenient smooth as butter always like this um, now let's um, try to do this let's play a pentatonic scale here's another a third a third rather than the modal or the tonal approach let's go for the pentatonic approach that's yet a third planet that you can use over a major chord it's your job it's a very basic rule that, that it, it's like your responsibility to know your pentatonic scales because these are such a, a great tool for you to just sound smooth, you know, uh, uh, have a good flow in, in your music, it's a great tool to have. It's a basic tool that if you don't know, you're behind. You need to get with the program and get your pentatonic scales on. <laughs> so here we go, from C major, what is a major pentatonic scale? One major, th a second major third, five and six. So you got this, knowing your intervals here. If I got this as a tonic, I got my second here or here. My second, major third, perfect fifth, major six, uh, second, major, third, five, and six. All right, so and this is great.
great for exercising as well. I love the idea of using two note per string patterns because it opens up for a lot of uh, uh, rhythmic ideas using that potential, that characteristic. For example, something as basic as uh, a sixtuplet, which is two plus two plus two. So you got dagi dagi dagi. That's a sixtuplet. Daga 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 daga. But it's not daga da daga da daga da daga. It's daga daga daga. So you got this. Sounds like John McLaughlin's school of, of thought. Or. Sorry about that, guys, about that little uh, burst of energy. Let's see here. Uh, hello, everyone. Alex Lopez. Need an individual to help follow your verbal explanation. Need a visual to help follow. Okay, okay. All right. Um, I don't even know what I was talking about. Okay, the, made, the, the pentatonic. You got the visual right here. Uh, so you got the major pentatonic from C, and then here. Minor pentatonic, which is the Bible of the guitar player, right? If you don't know your minor pentatonic, you should know it. It's the same for the C major, but you should look at it from the perspective of the C major root, meaning what the intervals are. This is not the fifth of A, this is the third of C. Third, five, six, tonic, nine, third, five, six, tonic, nine. You need to see it that way. And then the tonic is here, I'm gonna see three, nine, one, six, five. Exercise. I like to do that. Those those. Well, here's another exercise. Very good for fingering and for seeing the the pentatonics in a different way. Uh, when you have a pentatonic scale, it's two notes per string. So you got first and second note. All first notes from each string can form a column, like column A, and all the second notes are column B. So where you, where you had this C major pentatonic, uh, you can have this column A, column B. Okay, and then you can group them. You can play two notes at a time. You can play three notes at a time. at a time if you want uh, that would be a little more tough but it's cool great exercise you have to see the shape and put your finger over it and try to make it happen and then you can use chromatics from that idea it sounds really cool to go like <laughs> it's it's a fun little effect or sometimes uh, a technique that I use, this is a hybrid technique, um, is basically uh, the use of the thumb as a pick also as well as with the fingers as sweeping and with the three fingers. It's basically a, a um, um, how can I explain? It's basically an explosion of, of different tools that uh, hadn't been considered much from the classical school and that open up the, the spectrum of possibilities for the right hand, and that comes even from the imitation of the use of a pick uh, from flamenco, from Brazilian music as well. Uh, so here's an um, um, example. On the hybrid technique, you, instead of doing this, which is what a classical player would do, they, he would finger pick like that. On well, the hybrid technique, you use the thumb down as a, as a, as a sweep, and then you sweep up with a finger. So you got this. It's a whole other deal. Oh, sorry about that. So it needs for, uh, for you to find a sweet spot here on your hand that favors both the, the attack of the thumb as well as the attack of the one. So one of the one good exercise that I developed for this was going like this. 
the, the, the most complicated point is that of switch between one technique to the other. So here I do like this. Right at the switch time, I play twice. I go to, to make sure I repeat the, the weakest, the most complicated moment. I, get, I repeat it. And I go up with the sweep. And then when I get to the switch point, I repeat it again. So I get this. It's almost even like a musical phrase, you know, it, you could add it to your vocabulary. Uh, and then I respecting the shape of the scale, I'll move up and down. And so it's both an exercise for the, the, the right hand hybrid technique, for the left hand for sure, because these positions sometimes are uncomfortable, and for your vocabulary. And at the same time you're doing this, you should always be realizing what those intervals are from the root being C. So if I do this, that's three, six, nine, and in, in here is nine, five, one. So I got that three, six, nine, one, five, nine, and then six, uh, six, nine, five, and then three, one, five. that it's a great tool and I, I I'm impressed I'm shocked with uh, how many fingerstyle guitar players don't make use of that it's strange to me uh, this is to me is such such a um, uh, such a an effective such an efficient tool okay let's read a few more questions uh, cool scales and pages and licks do you use any specific Brazilian rhythm things when improvising or basically the same things as if you're playing jazz uh, maybe Brazilian percussion rhythm stuff on soul lines or no. Absolutely, absolutely. This is basically a fusion of both languages. Brazilian music is naturally uh, uh, naturally mixed with jazz music, especially in the Bossa Nova era there from the end of the 50s, uh, especially in the 60s. When Bossa Nova came around, it was a huge influence that João Gilberto and Jobim had had from the American music, from classical composers like Debussy and an American composer like uh, Gershwin or Ellington. Um, so the, the Brazilian music definitely has that influence. However, the difference between them lies on the rhythmic language. Whereas in American music, you have mostly of you know, that mo jazz music, you have the swing. In the Brazilian music, you have a variety of, of languages there uh, coming from basically the northern and the central, central tree uh, would be the northern would be Baião and the central would be the samba. <coughs> so from those two different roots or trees, you have a variety of different rhythms around that. From the, the tree of, of Baião, you're going to have chachado, afoxé, you're going to have coco, you're going to have forró, you're going to have shot, uh, enfim. Uh, and from the samba, then you have samba de partido alto, you have uh, samba de roda, you have uh, choro, you're going to have bossa nova, then you're going to have the claves, the different claves of samba. You can have ta 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 that's opposite claves is the same samba but it's claves upside down you're twisting it around so you have a bunch of rhythms and yeah it's from the ha having that knowledge then you apply it to the guitar like for example a jazz player could play a 2-5-1 here going whereas a Brazilian guy would go carrying the bass lines, but also in the subdivision. That's what I call micro subdividing, is when you have four sixteenth notes, but you treat them differently, not cold divided, but with a, with a rhythmic language of accent, which I do explain in the uh, Brazilian, sequence of Brazilian guitar course. Uh, basically, the, the accent is this, instead of going ta 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 ta, that's a, a, just a straight subdivision, ta 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 ta, you got this. The duration of the beat is the same. See how it's totally different. And I do have that written out in the in this PDF of instruction. 
So let's read some more. Maybe resilient percussion. Yeah, so basically the, the, the idea here is emulating the percussion. You can even practice like that without any chord. One of the tools for doing this is not only having the independence of the thumb, which and the thumb should always go tonic, low, tonic, five, the lower fifth, to emulate the sourd, which is a big skin that plays uh, closed and open. So that's the guitar picking up the, the language of the, of the African drum. So it's very fundamental to, to understand that. Um, what I was going to say is one of the most important tools for you to be able to pull that groove off is the double stroke technique, which is dividing um, independency or rhythmic uh, difference between this finger and these two here. They are going to work like that, pretty much. And you have this. Um, you can use that just in one spot like this. See? There. Or you can use it continuously. And of course, the groove is also happening here because on here, I'm pressing and releasing staccato and sometimes even playing the string open to create organic movement, you know? Instead of playing, I can go. Alive, you know what I mean? And that comes from listening to the music. You listen to the music and then you play a lot of guitar <laughs> and then that's going to, uh, the, 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 the music is happening in your mind. When, I, when I'm playing guitar, I'm hearing it in my mind. I'm, I'm hearing that in my mind and I'm trying to emulate it with my fingers. All right, boom. Are these hybrid picking pentatonic exercises phrases available somewhere to see download their fingers for practicing? Yeah, absolutely, man. I have two. I have two things going on right now. I have the Brazilian guitar, Brazil, Secrets of Brazilian Guitar course, which actually is this week is open for sale, and uh, it basically is the second group of students. It opens uh, opens a group of students every two or three months or so, and um, basically these people um, go into the course. And then uh, the course is 12 hours of recorded lessons plus 12 hours of lives personally with me that the group gets to have. And there's a, uh, uh, the, the sales are open right now and end on Monday. And on that course, I teach everything towards Brazilian music. So I teach, um, there's a lot of modules, it's 12 hours of recorded lessons where I cover all the rhythms, all the techniques for the rhythms, then I cover harmony, then I cover bass lines, I cover techniques of melodic execution, which is these picados and, and possibilities here, and then I cover 12 songs from Brazilian repertoire. That's one thing. So it's a great course, it's available for $99, and uh, you guys can, can get it. I, I definitely urge you to do it, it's a great value because my personal lessons are 50 bucks. So for, two, for, the, for less than the price of two lessons, you can go into the course, and it's a lifelong uh, thing that you have available. You know, you can, you can watch the videos anytime if you don't want to take the lesson uh, t tomorrow or day after. You can do it next week or next month, and it's there for you. Uh, and the other thing that I have is the, is, uh, the hybrid technique, which is um, it's, uh, three volumes of, of uh, just hybrid technique examples and explanation, which is available on iMusic Academy. That's another site that you can go to. Just type in iMusic Academy altogether, and you have the hybrid technique uh, mo uh, volumes there. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm going to probably be recording this Bra Secrets of Brazilian Guitar course has been a major success. From the first uh, group of students that we have, we had a, a lot of really cool testimonials uh, that people are, seem to be happy. You know, they're they about past the half of the course right now. And they're very satisfied, it seems, um, and we're going on with the uh, weekly lessons for three months. But I'm going to probably be recording another course, which is probably going to be geared towards Brazilian jazz, which is what most of my students have been asking for as I do teach private lessons. And that's something where everything comes together. It's Brazilian uh, hybrid, te uh, hybrid technique, Brazilian music, and jazz all together. So here we go. Uh, always thought it's enough. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Bo, that's it. Um, you can check out the, um, the uh, Brazilian, uh, the Secrets of Brazilian complete course. Just Google that and you'll probably find the page. Or you can go to my page, which is uh, felipecoelhoguitar.com. And there's a little button on top of the screen that takes you to the course. Um, so uh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, and the link is right there. The link for the Secrets of Brazilian Guitar. You can get it right here. This is for those who like the Latin repertoire, uh, a lot of uh, different ways to play uh, Brazilian songs. 
there's uh, there's maracatu also. It's a it's a really cool beat. Um, and then uh, yeah, Luis Perez, Brazilian jazz. It's coming, man. It's probably gonna be coming. It's gonna be the next course I'm going to offer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so yeah, Bo, check the, the the Brazilian guitar course and check the uh, I Music Acad I Music Academy for the hybrid pick hybrid technique. There's three volumes there. And stay tuned with us, man. Please follow the channel here so that you can be um, you can be told whenever the Brazilian jazz course is coming about, which is gonna put all that together, hybrid technique and Brazilian guitar. Uh, all right, uh, let me play a little more here to you guys. Um, Unfortunately, have to come to the end of this uh, short live here. It's been one hour because I do have uh, a lesson coming up with a buddy from LA. Shout out to LA, all the guitarists in LA, Ruzbe Hoshmandi and Mark Bodas. Uh, guys, I hope you were here with me. Um, I do not know Bahia, but I know it's a great place. So, guys, thank you so much for being with me. Please uh, sign up for the channel, leave a comment, go check out the Secrets of Brazilian Guitar Complete Course. The link is right above here on the chat. The opening, the sales is only this week, guys. Please uh, don't lose this, pop, this opportunity. Uh, we already have, I believe, 28, 28 people uh, that have uh, entered the, the team. So it's a beautiful team and we're going to uh, make it available for three or four more days. And then you get to have 
12 hours of recorded uh, lessons plus 12 hours of personal lives with me in the closed group of students. And uh, all this material has been put together with a lot of love, a lot of patience, a lot of care um, to explain to you step by step, taking you by the hand from the most basic Brazilian rhythms to all the ginga and all the mayas and all the chitty chitty bang bang. All right, guys, it's been nice to be with you. I'll see you guys later. Sign up to the channel and word to your mama. Kiss in the heart.